if she doesn't even use RPE scale. But uh, yeah, that's just that's just how genetics goes. Some of us have them, some of us don't. So Haley, uh, we're gonna get going on this thing. I'm gonna need you out of the room since uh, you're a straight bro and don't know what you're doing. Thank you. All right, guys. So um, the bro's out of the room. Let's get it going. Uh, this is actually the progression scheme that I have. That freakishly strong 19-year-old kid. It's going to be pretty. Come on. Oh, Lord. With, and again, I am my own camera person, so we're going to have to put up with a lot of this, but I'll do my best. All right, so the RPE scale. I think a lot of folks out there, and I don't think the person who, who actually asked this question is confused by what it means. I think a lot of folks think this is a workout, and I've had many guys tell me, you know, Dude, so you're on that RPE program. When, you know, it's really not a program, it's not a workout. You can actually apply it to a lot of programs. You could apply it to the 5x5s or, or, the, or the Wendler 531, 2 Shikos. You could apply it to many different um, programs, to a FAT type system, to all that, to a lower push-pull leg system. You can, you can totally uh, have this um, be part of any program, basically. But what we're going to do today is we're going to go over... Brian's system, or at least his current progression scheme, so that you guys get a good idea as to how we make things move, how we uh, progress and, and get stronger and uh, use the RPE scale to our advantage. So, Brian Jewell, uh, week one, I think it's a 3 by 5 at 8.5, so an RPE of 8.5 means, means two reps left in the tank. He could have done two more reps, but obviously we're not doing those two, those two extra reps, we're leaving it there. And he does that for two weeks, three by five at 8.5, and then week three, uh, one by five at 8.5, and then what do we have here? Um, and then week four, one by one at 10, and then I'll tell you guys what that is afterwards. But most systems, especially the ones that use percentages primarily, they would totally take into account his current max squat, which is... Uh, 405, which is great. I think that's awesome to use percentages, and, and it's, 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 an, it's a great way to train. It's way better than what most people do. But the issue with using 405 to anchor the rest of this work here is the fact that this person was this strong on this specific day. So Brian Jewell was 405 strong on, on April 20th, but is he always 405 strong? Probably not. Some days he, he's, he's probably not 405 strong. He's probably a little weaker. Some days he's, he's a little better. So that's the issue with being married to percentages. So if they're not very flexible, they're not very dynamic, they don't really um, adjust to where you're at in terms of your recovery. So <clears throat> what um, we do instead is these definitely help a ton and that they kind of give us a good idea is as, as to where we float about on most days. So, you know, this is one per, uh, this is 100% of his one rep max, and then 85% of, of his one rep max is going to be uh, about 345, and then 90 is going to be about 365. Excuse the horrible handwriting. Um, so we know that we kind of float around these ranges, okay? Uh, you know, a 405 squatter is not going to be a 315 squatter from one week to the next or a four, from a 405 to a 475. Uh, we generally are going to float around here as uh, we make progress. So what we're going to do here is let's first of all examine week one. Week one is a 3 by 5 at 8.5. So basically he's going to be doing triples with a weight that he can do for five reps. Okay. And 85% is right about where most people can find their five rep max. So what he's going to use on this given day is going to be it's kind of it's going to be floating around here. Okay, so at least for his top end set, his heaviest set is most likely going to be around there. And most likely, what happens on this scheme is that with every set, he's going to trim down a little bit of weight, of course, because fatigue is is going to add up. But his heaviest set is going to be right around 85%. But on this given day, Brian Jewell walks in and he realizes that crap, I just don't have a lot of pop. Bar speed sucks. And um, he has to go with 335. So he does a, a set with 335. 
a set with three 25, he does two with uh, three 25s. And then finally the last two are with 315. So this is kind of an ad day, you know? But what does that mean? I mean, we weren't even close. Well, we were close, but we were under, you know, 85%, which, you know, especially for this guy, he's pretty predictable when it comes to his percentages. Um, we're a little, we're kind of underachieving on this day, but that's fine. Because today, on this given day, he was not a 405 squatter, okay? Um, and, you know, having, if we would have tried to force this, because this is what, again, this max effort attempt, or oh, this max effort squat says so, then, you know, we would have been in a lot of trouble. We probably would have, a lot of things would have happened that would have been not so great, you know. Um, you know, technique would have most likely, likely been off. We would have dug a deeper hole in our recovery. So going with 335 and just kind of undercutting it a bit, really, um, again, it's going to do us a whole lot more good than trying to force something out that just isn't there on that day. Uh, and then let's fast forward it to week two. It's kind of the same thing, but this week he feels like a stud. He just feels freaking awesome. Um, and you know what? He was actually 360 good. 360 good. And then he felt so good he was 350 good. So his first two sets were past. They, they were a little better than the than the 85% uh, would would tell you. And then finally, you know, he gets a 340. And then finally. Uh, 335, which was what he actually was the best he could muster on this day, and he ends the day with a three 325. So, hypothetically speaking, so yeah, you see how that works on a day where you weren't feeling so awesome. It just kind of uh, you just kind of worked with what you have, but then on a day that you felt really good, you kind of get to overachieve, and you know that's that's the beauty of of the RPE scale is the fact that if you're you know sure percentages are going to kind of give you a good idea as to where you know you're you're um, you're going to float around in terms of performance but um you know using the feedback that you get from the rpe scale um being able to really identify how you're feeling on that given day is going to let you really milk the progress when it's there and kind of fold when it's not and what that's going to do it's going to kind of sort of let you um uh, it's going to let progress happen in a more organic, natural fashion. A fa a, 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 in a way that kind of just, uh, it pulsates along with uh, the way your body's mending and, and adapting to the stimulus, which is uh, the weight training. And uh, we'll just close this up to, to finish it up so that you guys get a good idea as to how this goes. Um, so a one by, uh, he's hitting singles, five singles, um, an RP of 8.5, which is going to be, um, most people can hit threes with about 90% of their one rep max, so that's 365 for him. Um, so, so same thing here. You know, he feels not so hot. He hits 355 for a single because this really wore him out. And it was actually less than he can triple the week before, but that's okay. That's what the RP scale lets you do. And then 350, you know, and then just going to crap, but that's all right because RP scale, again, it doesn't really... It, it, it allows you to not worry so much on having good days or bad days, but just more so, um, it's more so about how you're feeling today. I like I like that. It's not about, it's not good days or bad days. It's more about just what it is today. And then uh, finally week 10, he gets to max out. And um, anyhow, that's basically how we set up a progression scheme on the RPE scale. And the cool part about this is that, you know, we, we get to make progress on weeks where, you know, we maybe weren't planning for it. Uh, usually week four is his big one because we kind of taper a bit on volume on week three. And right here in week four, he gets to hit a few singles and kind of get a good idea as to where he's at. But we made most of our progress on week two, which was just supposed to be kind of a ramp up week. Um, so, yeah, percentages are awesome. The only issue with percentages is that they kind of limit you to um, how you felt on a very specific day uh, two weeks ago, four weeks ago, whereas the RPE scale can kind of um, take what percentages give you and then make it that much better. So, uh, again, this is um, just one way of doing it. You can totally do this with uh, a wide variety of programs. You can do this with Shikos. You can do this with bodybuilding type routines. Um, and in my case, I am a big fan 
a big proponent of having some kind of scheme set up like this uh, for your main lifts and and then just kind of going a little bit more bodybuilderish when it comes to to the accessory work the, the 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 volume stuff the single joint isolation things but i really think and i really really push for my bodybuilders to have a plan when it comes to um to the, you know the, the 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 big movers the squat the the deadlift and and the presses so hopefully that, that helps you guys gives you a better understanding as to how you can attach this into any workout and um just how awesome it is to have a system that is a lot more dynamic and is going to go with the flow for the lack of a better term so um, one more video for this question and answer series I believe and then we have some really cool announcements coming up so I'll be on the lookout for that guys